This video is in partnership with the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. From NASCAR panties to APC United late models, this fan-led podcast hosted by Cam K and Graydon Bunn in Ontario covers many forms of Canadian motorsports. Check out their weekly episodes across YouTube and Spotify, follow them on Twitter, and join their Facebook group. Links in the description. Thank you to Cam K and GeForce TV for bringing me on to the Pinty's Power Hour once more. Well, we're here on the show. Excited to talk about the race breakdown, the NTN Ultimate Bearing Experience 250. Regan McCauley is here joining us and uh, amazing finish with Trayton Lapsovich. And I can't wait to talk about it with you, Regan, but the, there's probably somebody who'd be better um, to tell us all about his experience um, going into turn four. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? Uh, there's a reason why I told you to start right at five o'clock, uh, sharp, because, uh, I may oh have surprised my. Regan with Trayton lots of it. <laughs> oh, that's uh, incredible. First ever interview. And I uh, didn't want to put him, uh, on the spot here, Trayton, but I figured who, who better to do it than the first uh, winner of the 2023, uh, season, man, uh, that smile. Uh, tells us a lot, eh? Uh, how you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. How are you guys? Well, I, I don't know, Regan. How you feeling, buddy? Uh, we got you. Well, this definitely, this this definitely is a surprise. And I originally thought I was uh, gonna end up missing the race, but Noah over here in Atlanta, Canada, representing the Stickers and Scuffs podcast, uh, got rained out on Saturday night, so I got back to the hotel room, was able to get the race. And although TSN had a lot of errors for some reason, so I only got like early in the race every now and then it would pop up, but then we'd just go right back to an error message. And then ironically in the final 20 laps, it worked. So it was as Perfect. if it was saving the best for the end. So <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, Trayton, we've seen this before from you at, at sunset speedway and we've seen it actually before Delaware speedway. We've seen it a lot actually uh, from you and, and whatever it was, man, you had that car and that 22 racing team had it hooked up. Is it the Jeff Lapsovich magic? No, I, I wouldn't say it's uh, it's not the Jeff Lapsovich magic because <laughs> we work really good together. Um, I mean, obviously, I every race like that I won in late models, super stocks, mini stocks, even dating back, it's all been my dad. Um, you know, I think I, I, I don't want to say that it was completely attributed to the crew chief change because obviously my last crew chief, Terry, uh, he was a great, great crew chief as well. Uh, very knowledgeable. But I think the advantage having my dad with me is that he, he just he, he knows what I'm looking for. Uh, he's always kind of known what what I'm searching for. He understands how I explain things. He knows. And, and I mean, that's all a chemistry thing. Um, Terry was was getting pretty good with it, too. But just obviously no one knows you better than your dad. So um, he, he understands what I was what I was talking about. I was always searching for a feel last year, too. Um, and I, I was searching for a feel the year before. But this this weekend, we, we definitely found the feel. We, we know how we got there. So. I think uh, it's definitely been a good year to have my dad back on the top of the, the box. The the cool thing was seeing your brother on FaceTime in victory lane. That's got to be really cool. Yeah, it was. They were actually, he was in Nashville for the ARCA race. Um, so he was on FaceTime just, I think he said just as the race was rolling off or getting started. So uh, definitely pretty cool that he was able to, uh, to be there virtually for that. Yeah, it was... Uh... Man, I, I'm glad I have a voice back because I told you as, as you were climbing in the car, I didn't have one. Um, man, you, you've got a, got a habit of winning in really fantastic finishes. I mean, here last year, Oshweekin, and now this one, I say, can maybe we just make it nice and simple for the next one, eh? Yeah, we were actually talking about that after the race. Um, we we realized, well, my dad was actually the one who thought of it right away. But uh, like all every race that we've had uh, or that I've won have always been on the last lap. So um, it would be nice if one could just, you know, be a nice, calm race, 25 <laughs> lap run to the end. But uh, no, I'm kind of I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think now I'm 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 getting put in these situations so often, these high pressure situations. And I think I've been responding pretty good to them. And I think that's definitely something that I needed to, to, to learn heading into the Pinty series and just kind of unleash that inner aggressiveness that I, I maybe hadn't had in, in APC or, or years prior. So I think it's definitely helped. It's kind of progressed myself as a driver too. So uh, that's always a good thing. Regan, you got anything to say? 
<laughs> well, it's got to be the finish. It's got to be <laughs> right off yes. the bat. But I mean, yeah, Trey and you, like you dominate the whole day. Like there was practice and qualifying where you top both of those. And then there's the race where you're just leading the whole way. And then all of a sudden, of course, there's that late restart where all of a sudden it seems like it's all going to get screwed over for you. And Alex Gannett in the number three car comes through. And again, talking from a former Jason Hathaway fan, it was excellent to uh, see the number three car back up front in a consistent manner. But then, no, you were not going to let that get away, and you did the good old bump and run. I would just ask, Slay, like, take me through your thoughts on, like, how the day really went, and then, uh, again, dominate the race, and then almost taken away from you, but you weren't going to let that happen. Yeah, I mean, we were we were pretty good in practice right off the bat. Um, I know we went out, and we were sixth right off the bat in practice, and my dad was like, he said <laughs> later in the day, he's like, I wasn't expecting you to, like, be great right at the start of practice, but I didn't think you'd be sixth. So, um, but no, we, we were six right off the bat and then we made a, a really good adjustment, um, on the old tires that we were running. Cause we started on really old tires that we tested on. Um, we made a really good adjustment on them and I just knew it right away that that was what I was looking for. Um, so we, we put on some newer tires there, which I think a lot of people started on. So we were sixth right away, but we were, we were definitely on worse tires than a majority of the field. So we put on newer tires and then right away we hopped right up to the top. So and then, I mean, from there, I just, I told my dad and the rest of the crew just to not touch the car at all. I said, leave it. Uh, it was good. I kind of, I've done so many laps at sunset. I've done so many races there I, that I understand how the track changes throughout the night. And I understand how the cars change too. Um, so I knew that that was, that was what I wanted to go into the race with. Um, and qualifying, I mean, qualifying, I actually didn't think my laps were that great. I, I got out of the car and right away I said, before anyone told me that I had the pull because no one was really celebrating when I pulled into the pits. So I didn't even know the scoreboard wasn't working. Um, I said right away, I, I don't think that was a good lap because I, I under drove it. I hit the curb a little, little early, um, got a little tight, then kind of got sideways cause I was tight off, but, uh, they happen to be pretty good laps. Um, I think if I probably would have driven a little better in my qualifying, I would have been able to get Caden's record, but, uh, it's going to stand for another year at least. But, uh, no, and then I mean, in the race, the car was just so good. Um, when I was out there out front, when we had the first green flag run, I, I just I was really feeling out the car, and I, I knew we had a good piece. And honestly, that whole run, I was I was really just saving because I knew there was always a potential for us to get a caution later in that segment, uh, and we did. And from there on, it was pretty much just short green flag runs. But uh, no, and then I mean, at the end of the race on the green white checkered or the the last restart, it was a very similar thought process to Ashwigan. It was kind of like um, I'm not losing this race. That was kind of the thought process for a second. It, it definitely felt like I was, I think, you know, one last lap and I might not have got it or, um, you know, Alex also, he kind of left the door open um, for the last two corners. Um, and that just, it, it gave me an opportunity. Whereas, you know, I think maybe if you would have been on the bottom, it, it might not have happened too. So I think everything just kind of played in our favor, um, went my way. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we were definitely meant to win that race. And I was thinking too, like that car control on that move too was pretty sick. I thought you were both going around that corner right in front of the whole field. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said, I mean, my car was just so good all day that it was like, I, I could honestly do everything, anything I wanted with it, kind of put it anywhere. And there was nothing that I could really overstep, but it was, it was definitely, I, I think I said after the race that it must've felt like I entered turn three there way faster than I've ever entered at sunset. And just, I got on the brakes hard and yeah, I, I honestly don't know how we both didn't loop it because these cars, I mean, at sunset, these heavy cars and uh, not much grip, it's it's easy to, to spin them out. And I actually, my brother pointed that out to my little brother. He said he thought it was going to be um, a flashback from 2021 sunset um, with me and Lassard when when I kind of, I made a, a similar move and I was actually going a lot slower on entry then because we had a long green flag run, but uh, I ended up uh, looping it after contact there too. So yeah. Um, no, it was, uh, it stuck. I mean, great car all day. Just, that's just a huge props to the whole 22 racing team, really. Yeah, you can definitely tell 22 racing is firing on all cylinders. All three of you guys were flying at the beginning of practice. We were able to get there. Uh, Stackley had some problems. Tag, unfortunately, had some problems as well. Uh, aggressiveness certainly became the name of the game. Uh, the restart, the final restart with Cameron, how jacked up did he have you going into one? Because it looked like he had caved your rear bumper in. A lot. I've, I've never seen that much damage on a rear bumper off after a singular hit. Like I got out of the car and I was blown away about how, how I didn't get spun around there in the first place out of, out of anything really. 
Um, no, I, I like NASCAR was warning about me about my restarts going yeah. too early. Um, but the truth of the matter was I was getting, I was getting hit so hard from behind before <laughs> we even hit the restart zone. It was like, I had no choice, but to go, unless we we're just going to create a whole stack up. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, he definitely, he got me good on the final restart. He, he, um, I think he was pushing me all the way from middle of turn three to take the green all the way into turn one. So I don't know. I, I, I wish stuff like that wouldn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. obviously this one played out in my favor. Um, I can't say they all have, and they probably all won't, but, uh, yeah. no, I, I mean, at the end of the day, Cameron finished fourth, but you know, if, if maybe he doesn't make a move like that, maybe he finishes second or even has a shot for the win in, in the, um, the coming laps, because I mean, kind of the pattern of every restart was I would, I would clear the second place car off of turn yeah. two, every single restart. So yeah. I think, you know, if Cameron waits coming out of turn two and takes a shot at me in three, there's a much better, better opportunity for him to get to me. But, uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's just something that we'll see in the future, I guess. I mean, the dogs are absolutely going crazy for this. It is, it is awesome to hear that. Um, but yeah, I, I, someone's I, getting home. <laughs> I, I love that, uh, that the emotion was so evident when you got out of that car, like, Oh my God, it actually happened this time last year. It kind of, things kind of fell into place for you, but this one, you, there's so many races that you have had where you dominated and then something happened. And I mean, specifically, I think I'll go, I'll go back to Delaware last year, but the year before 2021. And that was like, it was set. That was yours. And then a whole bunch of stuff happened. People spawned and then it, it just didn't happen. And this one was like domination, 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 waiting for something to happen. I mean, as a fan, I felt like something was going to happen and it didn't happen. You got out of that car. Something about the uniform this year, man. If it's the, if it's the Delta bingo, I don't know what it is. But it just it seems to be a really nice, like bright uniform compared to maybe just the, the, the black that you had before. The car is absolutely beautiful. That paint job on it. And I didn't even notice that you guys kind of have the numbers skewed a little bit towards the front of the car. And you had some partners on that car that I had to ask for clarification, but it was their first time on a race car and you got them into victory lane. Uh, let's talk about the partners that you had on there. Yeah, I mean, Leading Edge Earthworks and the Souza Railing Company, they were um, they were two sponsors that actually came on really late. Um, the is going to be with us for the whole year. And then Leading Edge, that was that was their first time being on a winning car in the NASCAR Pinty Series. So it was really cool. And uh, hopefully we could have them involved in in more races going forward. They're a, they're a longtime supporter of uh, of Sunset Speedway, really. So a very local company to the, the Barry, the Innisfil area. So definitely really cool to have them on board and, and win for them, uh, in their, their home race really. So, uh, no, it's just, it's amazing. And then, uh, like you mentioned, the numbers being skewed a little bit forward that it definitely gives us an opportunity to produce more visibility for Delta bingo and, and FBM as well. So a great opportunity there. And, uh, it definitely ties the car all together. Nice. Um, we're, we're really happy to have Delta bingo, um, back in, in, in uh, bigger force this year. And then obviously FBM returning means a lot as well. Yeah, I mean, you've got some great partners on that car. Uh, still room for for partners, I believe, for the rest of this year. Uh, is your schedule set yet, or are we still potentially looking at needing some more assistance to to make it happen? Uh, right now, we're 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 getting there. Um, we do have uh, so leading edge was on the car in the quarter panels for sunset, and then uh, D'Souza Railing is going to be stepping up for CTMP. They're going to be uh, on the quarter panel for their their second race involved with us, and then uh, from there on, we're. Uh, you know, we're, we're, right now we have enough support to to run, I think, about three quarters of the season um, and we're, we're inching closer kind of every day. So, um, you know, we're, we're we're working hard at it. I think we're having meetings about every other day or even every day um, sometimes. So it's definitely a lot of stuff going on um, we're, we're everyone's working hard and just hopefully we can put it all together by the end of the season. It's definitely something that we want to see. And so we always want to put it out there here on the power hour and uh, on the stickers and scuffs podcast anywhere, really people, I think don't know what it's like to be involved in motorsports. but if you get somebody like Trayton Lapsovich, obviously you've got uh, a great chance of being at the front of the field, getting a lot of uh, coverage, um, TV and social media. What I really like seeing is um, seeing how you're getting into the marketing side of it yourself. You know, you've taken on a YouTube channel, you've taken on doing social media posts, 
on LinkedIn, you're putting stuff out there on the professional business setting. And, um, you know, it's, it is definitely a learning experience, I think. And, and the fact that there's a lot of people that won't, <laughs> won't do that side of it. Um, but, uh, how much have you learned just in the last year about how much you have to sell yourself, um, to partners? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've always been uh, really heavily involved in, in any of the, the marketing or the sponsorship stuff that goes on, especially um, I've been lucky enough in the, in the Pinty series to have the help of uh, Mark Dilly and the whole RGC sports team that have kind of taken over that role for me. But uh, no, I mean, in the APC series, every year we ran APC, every year we ran street stocks. That was uh, a lot of myself doing a lot of the marketing there um, and, and obviously getting down to the snowball derby um, for the snowflake, we were able to put together a lot of great partners to do that. So I'm definitely learning a lot um, every day. Um, it's it's really cool to be involved with it in, in the NASCAR side of things. So I think going to business school has definitely helped me uh, become involved. Um, I, I just finished first year marketing too. So uh, a big help there. And no, really my goal for this year was we just wanted to expand the different channels of coverage that we can prov provide to our partners. Um, because I think we're all starting to realize, and it's been pretty evident talking with uh, really high up people from big companies that the logo on the car really doesn't mean much to them anymore as much as it is it used to anyways. It's There's obviously some value with it, but uh, a lot of companies are seeing much more value on the social media side of things and uh, in that manner. So that's really where we're trying to expand. And that's where the idea from the YouTube channel come in place. And then also trying to expand and on uh, prior social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, stuff like that. Well, I definitely want to say that uh, uh, the, the business that you've been working on with uh, fast line detailing, something else I really like to, to see. Uh, that for whatever reason, you got me hooked on to watching these detailing videos and the satisfaction that you can see from seeing an old piece of crap turned into something brand new uh, is absolutely great. So it's something you get to do on the side as well. And um, it's crazy as somebody who's as young as you are doing all sorts of that stuff. Are you actually able to get into the bingo now and actually be able to, to gamble? That's the good question that you got to ask. And how many beers were you able to drink after uh, with that, that first win of the season, at least? Um, just, just one. Uh, just we, one. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it's a, uh, I'm busy. Uh, we, like you said, with fast line detailing all that. So, uh, no, uh, I, I definitely stay busy. Yeah, I haven't taken really full advantage of turning 19. I wouldn't say uh, it just feels like another year, honestly. So, uh, but it was definitely great to to be able to to celebrate in that manner with the team. Um, obviously, the wins last year, everyone else would uh, have the opportunity to to celebrate it when uh, I would have my Gatorades. So, um, <laughs> definitely fun. Hey. That Nothing wrong with a Gatorade car, man. Absolutely. That's what we need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Trayton, we don't want to take more of your time, man. You, honestly, thank you so much. I know it's probably been a, a crazy couple of days for you. And obviously, you're heading back out to CTMP this weekend. Uh, how do you feel about Road Course Program? Um, it's a little bit different for you. It's not really where your where your forte is. but uh, you know. And then, of course, going back to, uh, in a couple of months, you're heading over to... Uh, I guess this direction heading over to his uh, Regan's neck of the woods over to Eastbound Park. So uh, talk about that experience. Yeah, I, I think um, CTMP has kind of been it's a it's been a track that we've been pretty good at, um, especially in 2021. We had a great run there. I think I finished third my first time there. Um, 2022, we, we definitely saw some bad luck. And then with the rain as well, I feel like it rained both times we were there. It um, did. Yes, it was freezing. Was um, so. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather is looking better for this weekend anyways. Um, we've always had a pretty good road course program, I would say. Um, we finally got to test at CTMP last week, actually. So that was the first time we've ever tested at CTMP. Um, my only laps there prior had been on race day um, practice and whatnot. So that was definitely good to be able to get there and just try some different things. We learn a lot in testing. Uh, we're able to play with with the feel. Um, we make adjustments that was kind of where I get to feel what they do to the car um, in the sense that, you know, my road course racing experience is obviously, obviously not as uh, deep as some other drivers and my, my teammate tags. So. Um, kind of before I was just a follower, uh, I kind of just drive the car, they set it up and I, I drive it however it is, but, uh, it was nice to, to get some testing and, and to, uh, to feel what, what different things do on the road course. Um, it's not something that I'm as much familiar with, uh, on the oval side of things where I kind of know what everything does. Um, and I know that feel that I'm looking for, but, uh, definitely, definitely great to get some testing in. 
Well, Regan, you got anything else uh, for, for our man, Trayton Lapsovich before we let him go? Well, of course, Cam, you have to be repping the, repping the shirt there, huh? Trayton Lapsovich, <laughs> uh, you still got merch for this year or we got to go to the, the site? Uh, the site. The site. So what's the ah. site for everybody to go to? Uh, TraytonLapsovichRacing.com. You can get this beautiful shirt. I think you got shirts, hats, koozies, everything. We got, we got shirts, sweaters. I think there's crew necks on there, hoodies, a little bit of everything. Uh, there's long sleeves. Um, yeah. No thongs uh, we're, or anything like that yet. So no, we're, we're trying to, to get to a point where we can carry merch at the racetrack. So, uh, hopefully we can get there. It's just everything kind of comes together so soon. Um, and so close to the race keys and getting going. So it's definitely something that we're going to try and look into, uh, as we move in further in the season. Well, uh, based on how you perform there at sunset, we definitely want to see more of that, uh, over the upcoming races and hopefully you'll be able to put things together and even, uh, be able to run the full season, of course. Absolutely. Um, I'm just hoping that we can, uh, definitely continue showing up to the track with fast cars like that. Uh, I think a lot of our issues last year were those, was those DNFs. So hopefully we can, we can cure all that. Um, and just, you know, uh, get these consistent finishes, compete for these wins and uh, yeah, hopefully wrap up with a good season. Well, it turns out that you were the person that was picked by the NASCAR Penny series community page as the person that was going to win the season opener. So turned out pretty good there. How can people follow along with your racing journey this year with your social media? Absolutely. Um, like you mentioned earlier, um, we're, we're kind of building a presence on every social media platform. So uh, for the most part, it's just my name on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and then Trade Lapse Search Racing on YouTube. We're going to, I think if I get some time this week, we're going to finish up the video from Sunset and put that out there. So uh, it should be good. Well, Trayton Lapsovich, winner of the NTN Ultimate Bearing Experience 250, season opener for the NASCAR Penny Series, joining us on the Power Hour tonight. Thank you so much, Trayton. We really appreciate you uh, taking some time to chat with both of us. Thanks, guys. So uh, I didn't warn you ahead <laughs> you of did time. did not. <laughs> um, because I thought, what nice a surprise would it be um, for Regan to get an opportunity to, to chat with the, the winner? So, man, what a race, eh? That was, uh, and for experience-wise, like I was there. Um, Regan, there was battles the entire race and i was oh, oh yeah i i was completely shocked because the first half of the race there were guys that were absolute crap who came back and finished in great positions uh brandon mcfarland was one of them they were so, like they were out to lunch in that first half he was slow they were strong you could see it and then all of a sudden it's like they woke up and he just flew through lap cars. He kept it clean. Wallace Stacy had a great race. His probably his best race of his career kept it clean. Didn't have a single spin stayed out of the way. I think it was only two laps down at the end of the race. So a solid race for him. And again, he's brand new still to this deal. He's not a, uh, an oval track racer. He's not a, a pavement racer. It got a little chaotic towards the end. I think we could say was typical short track racing. Not surprising. Not surprising. But you mentioned Trayton's move was, was kind of a bump and run, but he almost, he just kind of like dove it inside. And I, I agree with you. I thought there's no way that they're making it out of three and four. None. And I thought Cameron was going to go to the inside. What a finish. I would that's how you start the season. Well, yeah, I thought they were gonna block the whole damn track with what had happened there. Lacroix would have tried the outside, Cameron would have tried the inside, and neither probably both of them could have gotten wrecked there somehow. Going through uh just some of the headlines that I was able to capture from the whole race. Yep. Um, first from like practice and qualifying, a guy like Donald T, you know, gets tenth in practice, yeah, qualifies second, and then he goes on to get a top five, a very solid race for the number 80 car. You know what's right funny there. about that too is I asked mm -hmm. Tej how the car was. And he said it was crap before, oh, he, of, of before he went out and sat on the front row. So yeah. I know not to listen to what the Don says now, because the Don clearly the Don, the uh, Don, he, the Don is clearly, that's his game face. Huh? He's yeah. says it's crap and then goes out and does that. And then as the race goes on to like, again, TSM was kind of sucky. I'm sure people that watched on flow racing probably had a 
better time on there. But from what I saw through the, the race, like I know the top five was pretty interesting early on. Like obviously Lapsovich was dominating. Alex Gannett was up at the front. Donald Teach there as well. And also to Kyle Steckley had a fantastic car. Like he practiced third, qualified sixth. And then in the race, he has the car on pace for, I would say maybe a podium. And then, yeah, of course I think get, so. and, and then it gets screwed over by the end. Yeah. And we didn't know, like we didn't know what happened when we were at the track. Cause we obviously the broadcast doesn't know either. Right. Uh, and it turns out the battery died. And I was like, well, of all things, a battery dying at a 250, like, it's not something I, I, I don't know. It's not something I would have thought would have happened on the first race of the season. I guess faulty battery or something for sure. Uh, he again has had a knack for this deal. I mean, when you're the son of Scott Steckley, clearly you've got talent, but still being in high school, uh, he's poising himself very well to be a champion in the future. I mean, like, I don't know what you think, but the Ontario talent pool is starting to become very noticeable. And again, when we talked with Trayton Lapsovich, he talked about how it, you can't just get a logo on a race car. It, 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 you have to have that marketability. And what I think Kyle's very good at, what Trayton's very good at, is they're very good talkers, very good um, speakers. You kind of need to do that. I, I really think like DJ always mentions Castrol. Any interview he's ever done, always Castro, Brian Cathcart, you know what he's going to say because he he always is sponsors, uh, for, uh, not even sponsors, partners, we'll call them, partners first. And that's getting away from that terminology. I think it's something that racers that I talk with, it, we've started to, to try and change the language. Tony Spiteri, who's in charge uh, in NASCAR Canada, had talked with us about that and said, you want to change the wording. Because sponsor sounds like someone's just giving you money. And that's not true. You, you, that's not what people want. It's not you just give us money and you don't do anything in return. Well, well that's the thing. Right? Whenever it's a partnership, it's a collaboration. It yes. sounds like a win-win right there. But yes. then when you say sponsorship, it's just like, yeah, here's some money. There you go. I'll exactly. You exactly. And you can't, that, that would, no one's going to just give you that money to just spend, you know, you got guys that, I mean, we've talked about this. Like I, there's some great stuff that came out of this weekend. Uh, Brandon McFarlane, Josh Collins. I didn't know make a wish was going to be on the hood. And that is a fantastic story. Wing and it has a great collaboration with, with make a wish. They're basically going to work together and have con- contributions made to make a wish through winging it through their NASCAR Pinty series program. Oh yeah. That that's definitely fantastic here, especially, you know, the Atlanta Canada stuff and all that coming from mm-hmm. here too. And like, I guess the, 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 the term I would use for him over, uh, over Saturday was like, I feel like he was the driver of the back of the field. Like you have the, yeah. at the front at the front, the, the, the star was Trayton Lapsovich. Like if you had yeah. your three stars of the day, it's like yeah. one was Lapsovich, two was Gannett. And then three Absolutely. would be, and then three would be that guy you wouldn't expect, and then no one was expecting. I wasn't expecting. Yeah. You definitely weren't either. Nope. Brandon McFarlane practiced 18th. He used a yep. provisional in qualifying. Yep. And I believe what was it? He went two laps down in the race. Yep. And then yep. he comes right back and he finishes as the final car on the lead lap, taking advantage of guys like Ranger, Tagliani, and Steckley, who all end up getting out, and Thomas Navo too, which that was very unfortunate to see him. Uh, he had a tough a day. He had a tough a day. bit of a rough start. Yeah. Yeah. But, but McFarlane comes home 11th. He falls just short of a top 10, but 11th in that kind of a field is outstanding for that outstanding. team. That's just getting started. Obviously yeah. Josh Collins did have a bit of a worse night, but he still got the finish. That's they, something. I mean, I mean, and that's, and for them, I mean, they, that 56 car, they had had problems in practice. Like they, it, he yeah. was the slowest, I think in qualifying the, one of the biggest shocks to me was Malcolm strong. Yes. Jim, yes. Jim Bray auto sport doesn't know that he's going to be racing with the 98 car until this week. I believe it was all, it was right down to the wire here was yeah. printing out hero cards or, or photos. At least it was at staples on, <laughs> I think it was either Thursday or Friday night. And he had messaged me and asked how many, you know, is, is, is this going to be enough? And I said, uh, you might want to do a couple more, right? Wow. That car was in 11th up to as high as I think 10th 
in the race. Now, unfortunately, they made some contact and it damaged the, 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 the wheel and they did have some suspension damage. 13th place out of 21 cars when you don't know you're going to be racing. He hasn't been in a Pinty's car since 2021 at Delaware. Uh, by far, my favorite performance. Now, maybe it's just the stickers and scuffs sticker that was on the car, giving it extra yeah. horsepower. horsepower. Yeah. But <laughs> Jim Bray Racing, that is a hell of a performance for them in that stacked of a field. Now, for you, though, Regan, who had a race that they want to forget? Well, there are different drivers you can think in that category. Uh, hmm. I'm going to say okay. it. Okay. Okay. I'm say it. I was, you're... okay. I was going to say, okay. I don't know if we'll say the same name, but Ranger. Yes. I was going to say okay. somebody's, somebody's uh championship pick may have had an awful start to the season. Oh, well, now, now it's not you. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Graydon was saying a bunch of stuff. I don't oh, know. Man. Right, right. He was right. saying a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. For the parts that TSM was able to show that I got to witness, mm-hmm. one of them, ironically, was when Ranger and uh, Kennington were like playing bumper cars in the corner. Early, too. Yeah. Right? It was crazy. Yeah. We can explain this, and I think a thousand times. Ranger's not a fan of Sunset Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just, and this is what I love about it is that there are people that we talk about all the time and 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 sure they have it with drivers out in Atlanta Canada too is there's just some tracks that they just can't get and Rangers I I I don't I'd have to go back and look at the stats but I don't think he's ever really done very well at sunset anytime we've been here last year they really struggled and this year was the same unfortunately he got involved in a couple of squabbles with people um I'm sure it's better than what he dealt with a Delaware last year that that's always better. My disappointment really for the day was tag. He was having such a good run. It was the NTN bearings, the tons of tons of people from NTN there. And it, it really wasn't his own doing. He just kind of wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one situation I remember was between JP Bergeron and Glenn Styers. Unfortunately, yeah. Styers got the wrong end of that one. He yep. didn't finish the race, 49 laps down. But then, of course, we go back right back to the positives. It doesn't end there because JP Bergeron went on to finish eighth. That's another one. He was yes. also way behind at the beginning of the race. Falling yeah, and like, I think, what was it? Like in qualifying, he what was it? He got the worst lap like in eight, qualifying? 18th? I know, I think it was like, eight, like 18th was his. Like there was, there was those like four provisionals or something like that. And yeah. then he was like right there. Yeah. Like, and I don't, I don't know how that, like how it happened. He just, <laughs> and that's what I meant. Like the, the racing itself, I was blown away with how good it was. You know, like yeah. it's like the field was going to be competitive. I didn't think it was going to be that competitive. Like, and also too, uh, yeah. Larry Jackson, he had a good run too. And, and he was involved and had the, had to come in because the tail got ripped off the car and it was hanging off. Um, yeah. That was him and Ranger that had had contact there. Yeah. Ranger got it to the front and he got it on the back. He comes in and I'm like, oh man, Larry was in the top 10. He was ahead of DJ. He was ahead. And that's another guy. DJ fell, was a lap down really early. He came back and finished, I think, six, was it sixth? I think he finished. The amount of people that struggled and came back and then the people that were at the front and fell back, it was it was awesome. It was such an entertaining race. And I lost my friggin' mind because, again, like you said, we talked about Team 3. I really liked that move in the offseason. Really liked that move with Alex Gannett going there. And in the first, I think that may have been his best ever qualifying in an oval. And I'm pretty sure it was his best ever finish on an oval. Oh, definitely was. And we have not seen the three car up front since Jason, I think. You got to love it. Uh, Team three, Ed Hackinson's been at this deal for forever. Jamie Hackinson's been at this deal forever. And they, you know, they had a really tough year a great start with dexter last year finishing in third place at ctmp but really aside from that oh and then of course rafael finning finishing runner up at sunset last year too this is what you want to see you want to see teams kind of come back and rebuild and i really after this first race i'd say cameron's still very strong and i think the real story will be how he kevin lacroix lp dumoulin and ranger are 
this weekend at CTMP because I think that's really the who's going to be the best on the road courses this year. Yeah, especially with Sunset too being like that short oval where you're pretty much expecting any anything can happen, any chaos can happen, yeah. like we saw with this year and last year with the finishes, of course. But now CTMP is going to be like a true test. And mm-hmm. with the veterans, there will be a little bit more trust towards them because especially with young guys like, you know, there's uh, Lapsovich, there's mm-hmm. Watson, there's Steckley. Like they have the potential. It's just they don't have too much experience in terms of like, like promise. They don't have yeah. a whole lot of promise there. Like they've no, some of them have definitely done good. I know Thomas Naveau will probably be the one guy where we'll definitely get to see him prove himself. Cause again, his experience yeah. coming from road racing, it's it's like perfect right there. But then at the same time, he's young. So it's just like, and he's really there, young, but it's and just he's really it, young too. I who knows? He's, he's, I think he's 18 and I thought he was older than that. So yeah, Cause he was in the road to Indy, which seemed for like he was in it forever, but um, you know, he had a really rough start. Uh, Dave Jacobs racing had a, they had to fight all week. And unfortunately um, the car just uh, didn't seem to work out. They both struggled in qualifying, but again, I, I think the strong suit will be Nouveau um, also on the, on the street circuits. Cause that's what they do for, for the road to Indy as well. I think at the end of the day though, what came out of this was storylines a lot of exactly and i love it i mean glenn styers was 14th quickest in practice so he's got the speed he's got it better so there's things that you're gonna we were gonna want to watch all season long and i think right now potentially we're looking at 25 26 lowest maybe 24 at ctmp this week so the field's gonna get even more stacked. We've got some debuts. We have some returns, obviously Matthew Scannell. We always see around CTMP, the Clutes we see around CTMP, hopefully Gary Clutes in position to win this year. Simon Charbonneau making his series debut uh, this weekend as well. So CTMP, as long as there's no tornado and and hurricane like there was last year, should be a, a really good race. And then now we've got Chaudier, which is also looking pretty good. Car counts looking to be up where around right around where they were last year, which is around 22, uh, 21, 22. Last year's 23 cars. Don't know if we're going to get up to 23 this year, but just so many things to talk about. I think we've definitely got to uh, we, we got to continue this uh, all season long. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you once again for hopping on and, and chatting with us and chatting with Trayton Lapsovich. And I don't know if we'll be able to get a surprise every time. Um, but, uh, uh, we're definitely going to have some more fun this year uh, on the power hour. So thank you, buddy. Uh, can't wait to see what happens next at CTMP. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to catch it cause uh, my local track begins, uh, their season this upcoming weekend. So, uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but, uh, yeah, I can't wait for, uh, what comes next as per usual. Regan McCauley here on the power hour. Thank you guys. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap up the show shortly, but, uh, thank you, buddy. <laughs>